If you're considering getting a pair of Doc Martens, we all know it's a big investment. So before you shell out your hard earned money, here are five things that I wish I knew before I got my first pair of Doc Martens. The first and probably the most important thing is sizing. When it comes to sizing, this is going to determine how your Doc Martin fits. I've made so many videos on how your Doc Martens should fit and it's very difficult because certain Doc Martens, they fit a certain way, certain ones are too big, too small. So my best advice is to simply go to the Doc Martin stores. If you can, try them on, put them on your feet, and then you know exactly which one is good for you. But if that's not possible, another alternative, which is not 100%, I'll say measure your foot. If you can, measure your foot, and then they have the Doc Martin website. It's a chart, you can use that to get a size similar or close to it. Once you get your Doc Martens, they should fit not too tight nor too loose because there's a break-in period, and that is when your boots just get to mold right into your feet. The next thing, and it's probably one of the most important things, is breaking into your Doc Martens. Depending on which type of Doc Martens, the leather that you do get, Doc Martens take different times to break into. Some people, they can easily just go through a pair of Doc Martens and break them in no matter what the leather is. But what I'll tell you is determine which type of leather you want. Doc Martens, they have a variety of boots and they have it in different types of leather. So I'd advise you, if you want an easier process to break them in, please get yourself the soft leather or even the vegan. They do not require too much time to break into. They can fit onto your foot and they make your life so much easier. But if you want to be a rebel and you want the smooth leather, those are one of the hardest ones to break into, but you get that reward afterwards. And yes, you just have to know what you're doing and just be patient with it. Slowly but surely, you're gonna break into them and your Doc Martens are going to be very comfortable. Also, another thing that might affect your breaking in period is the sole that you get. The bigger the sole, sometimes it's harder to walk into like the Jadens. For me, I didn't have that much problem breaking into my Jadens because they're vegan, but the Jadens, some people do complain that they're a little bit harder to break into, especially the smooth leathers. If you're getting Jadens or anything like that, a soft leather is highly recommended. I'm tired of seeing people post images, videos of them bruising their foot because of Doc Martens. All of that is preventable. The next thing is taking care of your Doc Martens. Whenever you purchase a pair of Doc Martens, usually most of the leathers, they require some type of care. For example, I usually just buy the Doc Martens Wander Bomb and I will apply that about semi-annually, so twice a year, usually summer and then uh, winter time. The reason why I do that, it just preserves the leather and also I do it while I break into my Doc Martens. It just goes into the leather, makes it softer so that my boots won't peel or anything like that. That's the reason why you need a leather conditioner, just to make sure your boots are maintained. You don't have to put it on all the time, but every now and again, makes it perfect. Also, you have to know the different types of leather. When it comes to the vegan leather, obviously they're synthetic. They don't need much care. You just wipe it down and you should be good. And then also, when it comes to the patent leather, they're shiny. They don't need any like wander balsam. They use, I believe, another type of care. But things like that is something you should know. The next thing is the type of style of Doc Martens that you do get. You know Doc Martens make a variety of different type of boots and with that, some of them I'll say they're boots that can last year round while others are not. For example, the 1460s, they're very popular because obviously you can wear them year round. I would say the year round boots are the 1460s, you have the Jadens, and you have the um, Chelsea boots. And then also you can wear the 101s if you want to. But some of them are not year round. For me, for example, I don't wear my 1461s year round or my 3989s, which usually I keep them for the summertime. But this is also a thing to just think about whenever you're about to purchase one. Do you want to wear it year round? Do you want to wear it during certain seasons and things like that? Because Doc Martens, they do go with a lot of different outfits, but you have to decide how often do you want to wear it and when you want to wear it. The 1460s, year round, easy. 
The last thing to keep in mind when it comes to getting a pair of Doc Martens is the price. Why are some Doc Martens cost more than others? For example, we have the Made in England, which are like the iconic like logo or like the top tier Doc Martens. And they're the most expensive, you know? They have that tradition of basically where Doc Martens were made and all of that. And then you have the other ones where they're mainly made in Asia. They're a little bit cheaper, but does that mean the quality is a little bit less? Some people say yes, some people say no. But it's up to you. I think it's mainly how you take care of it and what you do with your Doc Martens. So with the pricing, it's up to you what you want to pay for it. And also, I'll say there's a lot of different websites that people are getting Doc Martens on sale or or you can do like Depop, you can buy secondhand, which it works too. You don't have to break into any secondhand Doc Martens, but that's another great idea. So when it comes to pricing, you really have to sit down and think, is it worth paying this much for a pair of brand new Doc Martens? Or are you gonna wait around the holidays? Or what are you gonna do when it comes to pricing? Because I feel like Doc Martens, the pricing is increasing year by year. So that's something to really consider. With all these tips in mind, you should be well equipped to get you a pair of Doc Martens. And I hope I've helped. If you have any more questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And check out some of my other videos. I go more in depth in like sizing and different aspects of Doc Martens. Thank you for watching.